Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. This week on my blog, I am featuring the sweetest cherries bundle. Um, you can find this in the new 2020, let's see, 2022 to 2023 Stampin' Up! annual catalog on page 19. I think it's probably my most favorite um, stamp set in the whole catalog. And it does have a matching punch, which we always love. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. We're not gonna stamp the cherries today. We're gonna do watercolor. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have three other videos for you. So if you're looking for more ideas, make sure you click the link here on YouTube, go back to my blog and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of them. All right, well, let's get started. I think the first thing that we're gonna do is our watercoloring. I'm gonna use a piece of uh, our watercolor paper and I'm gonna use Sweet Sorbet, which is a new in color and Garden Green, which is a color that's been around for a while. I'm gonna use one of my blocks um, to kind of serve as a palette. And I'm gonna carefully add a little bit of color to both ends like that. I've got my um, spritzer here. We can just add some water to our piece. And I've got my uh, water painters. Now I actually have two sets. So I have two of these fat brushes um, so that I don't have to clean them during the video. But we're gonna use the skinny one as well. The sets actually come in um, set, a set of three, the water painters do. Now I'm just gonna kind of squeeze out a little bit of water on here and then just start brushing half of this. It doesn't need to be anything special. You're just gonna wanna get that watercolor look. All right, and um, I'm gonna let it dry and then I will come back and add another coating of it, another layer of color, just to kind of get some variation to get that watercolor feel. Um, now, for the sake of the video, I've actually done that ahead of time, so we won't have to wait for it to dry. So I just kind of drop that color in, brush it around. I want it darker in some places and lighter in some other places. I don't want these two colors to mix, but I'm not too much too worried about it because our punch isn't gonna reach in the middle of that paper anyway. So the green is for the stem and the leaves, and the red, the sweet sorbet obviously, is for the cherries. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of blot some color on there so that I have some variation, and I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. Okay. Now, like I said, I have some pieces I've already done. So I'll pull those over. Um, you can see as I came back and did the second layer here, there's some variation in color. And that's kind of what I want for my cherries. I don't want them to be like a solid. I want you to be able to see some of that water, um, that water line where it dries. So we're gonna punch out two cherries and I'm just gonna kind of move it around to where I like the pattern. And let's see, ooh, I like that right there. Let's do that one. All right, so now we've got our two cherries. We don't need all of this. And then we will pull in our green that we just did. And we need two stems, but here's the trick for the stems. We need the stems to both face in. So take your punch and your paper and turn it over and punch it from the back, and that second stem will be facing in. All right, now I didn't get my leaf texture stamp, so let me grab that. This little, the little, I guess it's not texture, it's like a line for our, our leaves. I'm just gonna stamp it right there in garden green. It's the veining of the leaves. Now, I wanted to add an additional shine. Well, the stamp has a shine mark already on it, but we didn't stamp these. So we need a little bit of a shine mark on our cherry. So I'm gonna take my craft ink refill, if I can get it to come out, and just put a tiny little dot there on my um, block. And then I'm gonna take my, the little skinny paintbrush or the water painter and I find just brush a little kind of an arc line on there like that. Ooh, mine's kind of messy, that's okay. It's just a shine mark 
All right, so then let me grab a paper towel. The way you clean these is I open it up a little bit, untwist it, and squeeze some water out, and then just clean it off there on my paper towel. Make sure you close it again so it doesn't leak. Put that lid on. And then I will take that same paper towel and clean off my blocks. Now you can also take your blocks to the sink, wash them with dish soap. All right, we're gonna set that aside. Let it dry, hopefully. And let's stamp our, our little crates, if you will. Um, this stamp right here is a texture stamp, and I'm gonna stamp it on our craft paper in soft suede. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna stamp it twice really close to one another, but don't worry too much about it being exactly right because we're gonna cut these out and most of it's going to be covered up anyway. So just stamp another one right next to it. And then we'll do another one right here. And another one right there. Now we're gonna use our um, stitched rectangle to cut those out. So let me clean up my mess a bit. Bring the cut and emboss machine over here. All right, let's put that stitched rectangle right there. And the plate on top, and we'll run that through. And then we'll do the next one. So we have kind of like a little, I don't know, like a little crate or hay bale maybe to go there on our little cherry scene. I was inspired by a sign I saw on Etsy. It's a, like a sign you hang in your house and it had kind of a barnwood background. It was that looked like an old farm sign that said, you know, had cherries for sale. I thought it was very cute. So that's where my inspiration came for this card. Now we're gonna stamp that word sweet and I'm gonna use my Stamparatus because I have found that that big photopolymer stamp is a little bit hard, well, not hard, a little bit um, stubborn maybe, that's the word. I, because it's photopolymer, I have a hard time getting it to stamp all the way across just with my hand. But if I use my Stamparatus, I'll be able to lay that down and push it and then if it doesn't stamp in the right places or if it doesn't ink in the right places, I can lay it back down. I can re-ink it. Also, I want it to be nice and solid black. So you can ink, Memento is not quite as dark as stays on. And you can ink it, see how it's a little bit, it's not quite solid black enough. So I'm gonna ink it again and lay it down. And now it's perfect. Okay. So let's move that, close up our ink pad, and bring over our Stampin' Trimmer. And we're just gonna cut this word out just to the height, however high, however tall the word is, and however long the word is, we just wanna cut it out in a rectangle. right there. Sweet. Now we're going to stamp the birthday wishes. And we're going to do that in our sweet sorbet also. And this time we are going to fussy cut this out. And I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick on how to fussy cut this. I'm going to use a pencil to draw a, a, a bubble or a guideline for my scissors around the word. And that's gonna help me with my scissors. I don't have to guess where to cut. And if I go in too close, like I did right there, I'll just erase it and do it again. But if I had cut that, I couldn't uncut it. So that's why I'm drawing a pencil line. It's just a guide showing me where I need to cut. All right, now get your paper snips. They're the best for fussy cutting. 
And the first thing you want to do is cut off all the excess cardstock. Now, take your, your paper snips and just follow that line that you made. You want to use the middle part of the blade of your scissors and use your other hand to turn the paper. Try to leave your scissors stationary. Cut off that extra paper as you go. That will help you get in those little nooks and crannies. And then if you have pen, a stray pencil line that maybe you cut too far outside of it, just go back with your eraser and erase it. There we go. All right, I think we're ready to put all of this together. I have cut a smoky slate card base and I have a piece of heart and home designer series paper that wood plank that kind of looked like that sign that I saw on um, Etsy and I'm gonna adhere it right here to the card front like that now I'm gonna get my two little crates that I made and we're gonna put these on with dimensionals I like to use lots of dimensional dimensionals on my projects. So if you don't, you can just look, you can adhere them flat. And then I'm going to do this one overlapping a bit like that. Now I have cut out a vellum circle and I'm going to adhere that also with dimensionals. And I'm gonna put those dimensionals right in the middle where I think those cherries are gonna cover that up. So about like, well, we gotta move it over a little bit so it doesn't hang off the edge of the card. All right, now let's get two more dimensionals, put them right on top. And we're gonna put our cherries, we'll put one there and one there. Now let's get our stems and we're just gonna use a little bit of Tombow right here and we want them to meet in the middle and if you google cherries you will see that sometimes they hang in pairs like this and then they have a leaf a, a leaf or two at the top so i'm going to put those just kind of right there like that now i'm going to get these two leaves and i'm actually going to put a mini dimensional right there, oops, sliding these guys around, right under there to kind of hold them in place. That's why I like using Tombow. We can rearrange things if we need to. All right, now I'm gonna put a dot of glue on top and one leaf is gonna go facing to the right and one leaf is gonna go facing to the left like that. Now, you probably need to hold those on there for a second to give them some time to dry um, because that glue does take a few minutes. Now, with our dimensionals, let's come back over here with our sweet. And put that, I'm gonna kind of slide it behind that second one there like that. And then birthday wishes, we'll use mini dimensionals. One on each end will suffice. And we're gonna kind of overlap it like that. All right, now last but not least, grab your sweet sorbet baker's twine and tie a bow that has these long ends like that and we'll put this on with a glue dot right there those leaves aren't quite dry hold them in place while you arrange your bow and there you have it so cute and you can see no two cherries will be the same because you're punching them out of that watercolor paper. My shine lines here aren't quite as 
dark because I watered it down. And I thought later I probably didn't uh, need or want to water it down, but it depends on which way you like it. Do you want it bright white or just kind of a muted white? All right, that's it, you guys. Make sure you click the link here on YouTube, hop over to my blog, grab the dimensionals. There's a free PDF there for you with a supply list and measurements and two other Swedish cherry projects. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.